I'm on. Do this one. Do this one. Come over here. Yeah. Am I on? Still not on? <laughs> it's on. It's on. It's on. Just talk up. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to DeGraff United Methodist Church, those online and those who are here. So glad to see you. An announcement about our Sunday. Sunday about our Monday <laughs> lunches in the park. If uh, you would like to help us, we would gladly take help. And um, we've come here at 11 o'clock to get lunches together, and we're in the park at 11.30. So that's on Mondays. The program for Tuesday through Thursday, I was not here. I was in Wisconsin. They had a meeting, so I'll be getting more information about that. But we do need um, some volunteers that are willing to give up probably a couple hours. One hour? It will not start at least until the 13th, so that's at least a, a week later than what we thought. Sorry about that. Um, it's been kind of on and off of what we're doing. So, But we want to get those lunches to the kids, and that's not our program, but we're trying to help them. But they are starting the Friday lunch bunch at Quincy this Friday, so just make kids aware of that. Any other announcements? Uh, I just remind that uh, mulching time is coming up, so if you want to donate money for mulch, fine. Give it to Sarah and mark mulch on the envelope. Um, we are planning next Sunday we'll have the red petunias, so hopefully we can get them in the ground and mulch maybe Tuesday. We'll see how the weather goes and everything. <laughs> okay. Right. Red, red petunias next Sunday on the altar, as many as you can bring, so we can plant them around the church and make it beautiful. And also, we will be celebrating Pentecost, so if you could wear red, that would be great. To honor those who have fallen in service to our country, in remembering Memorial Day, could we stand and let's start our service today with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Please remain standing for our gathering song to honor our God. I've called your name some bro 
If you would, please remain standing for our opening hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
Lord of love and mercy, we come this day to you, the one who makes paths straight, who bears the burden of our sin and forgives and loves us to the end. Your son Jesus makes all things possible. Help us today. Help us to see that your yoke is firmly yet comfortably fitted. Help us to lay the weight of senseless burdens upon you, that we may take upon the yoke of love. In the name of Jesus, the risen Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As our worship team heads down. I'll share with you as we bring our hearts and ready them for worship this morning. I'm going to share with you Psalm 47. Come everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth. He subdues the nations before us, putting our enemies beneath our feet. He chose the promised land as our inheritance, the proud possession of Jacob's descendants, whom he loves. God has ascended with a mighty shout. The Lord has ascended with the trumpets blaring. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King over all the earth. Praise him with a psalm. God reigns above the nations, sitting on his holy throne. The rulers of the world have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For all the kings of earth, or all the kings of the earth belong to God. He is highly honored everywhere. Amen. So I want to welcome you all, guests, friends, guests who are with us online. Come to our time of prayer. Uh, if you want to, you can write your prayer requests on your, your slip. You can also track your name and attendance and all that fun stuff. Um, if you have something that you want to just say, you can raise your hand. Deb will come around. If you want to online put in the comments section anything that you need prayed for, uh, if you don't want everybody to see it, just put unspoken in there, and we'll, uh, we'll still pray for you. I have two prayer requests. Um, for little Liam, uh, they found something in his stomach. They're not sure, so they have to run a test on him to see what's going on. Hopefully it's just a hernia. And for our little Miss Charlotte, uh, she was having really bad seizures, and they hospitalized her. And um, they've upped her two medications and added another medication. And um, they want her to be fitted with a helmet uh, so when she falls, she won't hit, hurt her head again at all and uh, then they still have to schedule the MRI so she is home with mom and dad but um, just keep her in her prayers uh, we're gonna ask for traveling mercies for the eighth grade trip to DC uh, Riverside I believe leaves on the 31st and Sydney leaves on Wednesday so they may run into each other Yeah, I found that hard to believe. We were talking about DC trips, and I am not chaperoning, no. Um, so the reason behind that was because I thought we were in person annual conference, and it would have been this coming week. However, they then switched it to online. So by the time I told them it switched to online, it was too late for me to get in. So. Mine is the same piggybacking on the Washington DC trip because I have two of mine that are going. Um, so it's safe a prayer for safe travels and a praise because um, the ninth, I know they're considering themselves sophomores already, but these ninth graders were ones that were actually robbed of their DC trip. So they are actually combining with um, the ninth grade and the eighth graders so so definitely safe travels and a praise for that that they were able to have their trip after all <laughs> yeah and pray for the chaperones especially his chaperones he's man that guy's got his hands full 
Anybody else this morning? I have some tomato plants out here that I grew from seed, so if anyone would like to have some, I would appreciate you taking them off my hands. There you go. <laughs> Um, I have a couple praises. We have a 60th wedding anniversary celebration coming up for Jean and Elaine. And then also I thank God for uh, travel mercies that um, I had this week with my sister and a friend. We went up to Wisconsin uh, driving through Chicago um, that we never were in st stop traffic. That's always nice. So we just kind of coasted through there without a worry. So again, that's, it's very stressful when you hear about things that are going on, but there's also a lot of peace in those big cities. So um, just prayer for everyone that's on travel. Uh, you know, this is vacation time. Um, just be with everyone. I have kind of a praise. I was asked to be a bus aide this past school year for the special needs unit. And it turned out to also include Discovery Center kids pick up in the afternoon. And going into this, you're told, you know, they're autistic, they have problems. We had one that was a shaken baby, he's now three. And you just go into it and you don't know what to expect from these kids. You're told they're biters, they hit, they do all this kind of stuff. So you go into it just a little nervous, a little scared, and these kids are awesome. The, the Discovery Center three-year-old that was, we were told was a shaken baby, I didn't expect anything from him. And one day he starts counting. So we count. We did that for several days. And then one day I had my fingernails polished and he liked that, so he was looking at my hands. He counted backwards from 10 on my fingers. And the bus driver and I both dropped our mouths at the same time because, you know, he's three. He's a shaken baby. He's not supposed to be doing this stuff. And by the end of school year, they all really opened up and I was having full-blown conversations with him. And it, it was frustrating because there's still words that I couldn't understand and he couldn't make me understand and he's trying to make me understand and I'm going back and forth. I know what you're trying to say, I can't understand it. <laughs> but yeah, so it was just a blessing to me and I signed up to do it for two more years, so. <laughs> <laughs> Roped you right in, right? Yeah, they did, they suckered me. <laughs> else I'll add to your list the West Ohio Conference of the United Methodist Church will be meeting for their annual conference on Friday and Saturday of this coming week um, there is a lot of um, a lot of changes um, to the book of discipline being made uh, most of it is uh, verbiage and use of pronouns um, they are also uh, going to begin um, telling churches how they can disaffiliate um, if they would choose to do that. Um, there's also one recommendation of um, the re bringing back of the graceful exit, um, but I don't know how that's going to go. So pray for the voting, pray for the conversations that'll be had this weekend. Um, it'll be it'll be a, an interesting time. If you have nothing else to do and you want to take a nap, come my Friday and Saturday. We'll be here. Uh, we'll be in here. So it should be fun. <laughs> Anybody else this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we 
often forget that you are the creator of the universe. And you created everything that we can see with our eyes. You have made uh, human beings, and you made them in your own image. You made them in your image so that we would uh, be like you and understand you and know you, and then we decided that we were smarter than you, and we sinned, and once sin entered the world, death entered the world, and it changed everything. We have ever been, ever since then, been separated from you. And it was only through the goodness and the work of your son, Jesus Christ, and his atoning sacrifice for us that gives us an opportunity to have a conversation with you, to be in relationship, that we could be called sons and daughters of yours. What was broken in that relationship was made right, but unfortunately, (laughs) The world that we live in is still broken. This world that is not intended to last forever, nor are either one of our lives, none of that is supposed to last forever. There's only one thing, God, that you made sure that would last forever, and that's the new heaven and the new earth that are coming. It is with this hope and with this trust that we pray to you this morning. And it's with the work of Jesus that you listen And you're paying attention to us as we ask. You've heard us ask this morning for Liam and and more health problems for him, that you would continue to rush to him and to doctors and to his family, that healing can take place for him. You've been good to us at this point with his life. That little Charlotte, they would find a way to get around the insurance company hurdles and get the help that she needs to help them understand, enlighten a doctor or a nurse to the why as to these seizures are happening for her, and give Danny and Justin and their family patience and trust as they walk with her through this. We know that you are watching out for a lot of people that are traveling, uh, even some this weekend and some that are coming up, and so we pray that for those that we know that are traveling, you would Guard them, protect them, and keep them safe. We have groups from Riverside and Sydney that are headed off to D.C. next week, and we pray that you would watch over our kids, keep them protected, and keep them safe. And we trust you. We trust you with what's happening in the annual conference and in our United Methodist Church. We pray that you would give us clear answers and clear steps and guidance as to how we can maintain our scriptural holiness and yet also be loving and caring and kind to human beings. There isn't a choice of one or the other. It's the same. And God, we pray that you would uh, hear our praise of what it means to be there with kids as Deb had the opportunity of doing. And in that same breath, we pray that you would watch over our kids that you are fully aware of what happened in Texas this week and you are hopefully guiding and directing hearts and minds back to you that tragedies should not be senseless but carry the weight of what the real problem is. A brokenness, a broken world, a broken people. Our culture, God, can only sustain our selfishness for so long we eventually are going to have to understand that we need you. God, we pray that you would hear all of our voices. That in this moment of silence, everything that we've forgotten to say out loud, you would hear us as we bring that forward to you. Lord, hear our voices. Hear our prayers and do not let them fall on deaf ears. Hear us and move within your people. Hear us and allow your Holy Spirit to to work and guide and be 
present and seen again. Allow us, your creation, sons and daughters of yours, to stand firmly and to proclaim boldly that which will be. And that is your son returning and your son healing and your son making things whole again. May the power of our testimony always and forever be about Jesus and his work and the good news that he brings. That we should be found loving uh, unconditionally. We should be found being different than the rest of the world. There should be something about us that's not only attractive but stands out. That our grace is the same as yours. That our love is the same as yours. And that power uh, of what you have sent us is still here today. You are still a God in control. And God, we pray that we can make sure that we are praying every day, and especially praying the way that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for praying. This morning, I'm going to share with you. The reading of Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to be in verses 25 through 30. Now, it is Ascension Sunday, so we have to remember that there's also this story of Jesus ascending to heaven, promising to send back the Holy Spirit. I won't forget that. But today, I want us to hear these words of, of Jesus. You're able to stand if you want to. I know some of you are stirring. If you want to stand, you can stand for the reading of Scripture. Uh, I think God speaks to you no matter if you're standing or sitting. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, And the burden I give you is light. This is God's word for God's people. Amen. You may be seated. I know it's a loaded question, but how was your week? Busy, crazy, rain. It was wet at times for a couple days. Good, bad, indifferent, otherwise? I feel like like as we are walking through a week like we did this past week, we're faced with a lot of things that that have us looking inward and at ourselves. What did we do or what could we do or how did we do? Now hopefully all of you who are used to this, you've been doing that already. Every week you've been thinking about what does my worship look like? How is my life in your time of reflection? What am I doing? How does it look? You've been praying to God. You've been studying. And then you've been serving people around you. Five things that we could be doing, evaluating our relationship with God and if it's being fruitful and if it's being seen. Makes it take, the the week takes on a different adjustment and a different look when you think of it in that concept. How was it? What did we abandon first? Happy seventh Sunday of Easter. Woo! 
otherwise known as Ascension Sunday, the Sunday we celebrate Jesus rising, uh, leaving behind his disciples with a promise of the Holy Spirit will be coming. That's what he said. I got to go. One of the greatest parts about, I think, about Ascension Sunday is the fact that Jesus knew that he had to leave in order to send the Holy Spirit, which would be more helpful to them than he was. He's not wrong. Because we all now have access to that same Holy Spirit all the time. We've talked a lot about ways in which the power of our testimony to Jesus can change the world. We've talked about it, and, and it looks like the things that we should be doing. We, we talked about staying humble, how our humility can, can lead to uh, a less, less conflict, if you will, and more looking like Jesus. We talked about our hunger, staying hungry for things of God, not for things of this world. That changes your perspective. Last week, we talked about staying positive. It's hard sometimes to stay positive. And now this week, we come to what Jesus is trying to show us. Stay calm. I can't believe I had to, to go through my study this week for, and prepare for this moment with everything that was happening and the whole time I'm reading and studying about staying calm. While everybody else around me is freaking out, right? Me, news media everywhere, freak out, freak out, freak out. You know me, I like to study. So I looked up the definition of the word calm. What we think calm is, is sitting by a campfire on a nice, cool summer night. We think maybe it's fishing in the morning, early, before the sun's up. We think it's a spa day. That's calm to us. Calm to us is not necessarily what the definition of calm is, though. Definition of calm. Not showing or feeling nervousness, anger, or other strong emotions. It is also the absence of violent or confrontational activity within a place or group. <laughs> hmm. There's been a lot of not calm this week, hasn't there? <laughs> These emotions and outbursts is what Jesus is trying to help us control with what he's saying in today's text. There's another, if you want more, there's so much more. All the gospels share a different story. If you haven't understood this yet, every, every one of these Sundays that we've had, these last four Sundays, every one of these I've taken from a different gospel message. These are all things about Jesus, all from different gospels, all that go back to translating what it is that our testimony is speaking to. Jesus has a lot to say in all four of those texts. I figure I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Matthew today, so I'll stay in Matthew. But go back to chapter 6, verses 25 through 27. He says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store in any barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable to him than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? That's not even the text we use today. That's a totally different one. But it fits, doesn't it? What are we worried about? What are the things? What are the triggers? What is it that hits us all the time? God is trying to help us understand that being calm in Christ is trusting in God and leaving the worry to him. When we are calm in the face of worry, we will not lash out in anger. We will not act irresponsibly. We will not act in a poor way. Kind of talked about controlling our emotions in a, in a healthy manner last week. This is, again, part of that force. This is part of that process of controlling how you feel and how you react. 
when your trust is complete and understanding in the God that you know and love, the responses that you give are different than when he's not involved. So Jesus is speaking, and he prays in today's text. And I loved it, but I have to let you know this part was written Tuesday morning, probably before any of that tragedy ever happened. But he starts off in verse 25, and he says, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. And there's a lot to be said about what it means to be a child of God and what it means to have a simple faith and what it means to be believing in a simple way. See, Jesus is talking about being childlike because there's a a piece of trust that's there. It seems like an insult what he's saying. He's insulting the intelligent, and he's rewarding those who are, you know. But it's not necessarily true. It all involves, again, that word trust. See, children have to trust people in their life. They have to trust their parents, their guardians, their grandparents, their teachers. All of these people are in their life, and they have to be trusted in order to take care of them and have their best interest at heart. When that does not happen, children and their trust is damaged. We have done a very poor job, in my opinion, as a country, of placing our trust in God and allowing that trust to then benefit and bleed down to our children. It's now decades, uh, decades upon decades into what some could consider post-Christianity. And what are we left with? The Christian principles that we thought we were standing on and the thought we could trust God with have eroded And we're left with things like Tuesday. We're left with broken hearts and broken relationships. And unfortunately, there's too many times that we take these moments and we place that blame upon God. Where were you? Where have you been? God's response is simple. You've stopped trusting me. You don't allow me in anymore. I'm made up, and nobody believes in me. And if you're not going to believe in me, then why would I worry? Those who believe will believe, and those who won't, won't. I was having a conversation um, with Dwight on uh, Tuesday, and we were praying right about the time all the news was breaking. Uh, We were praying, and we both just kind of looked at each other, and it wasn't like a plan. We were like, let's pray. And let's pray for the, for the Spirit of God to move throughout our country. And literally, as a horrible thing that has been on everyone's devices is happening, we are literally praying in that moment for the Holy Spirit to move within people and to revive the country and, and bring it back to what it used to be. Not that it was great then, but at least it was better than it is now. It's a matter of trust. You can't have the calm unless you can trust the source of where that calm comes from. And Jesus makes the statement uh, further on in today's text, and he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This is highly mistaken and highly taken out of context a lot of times. What What do we think that means? Oh, let me take my disease... Let me take my problem, let me take that thing, and I want Jesus, I want you to be my genie in a lamp, and I want you to make it go away. That's not what he's saying. He says, those of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Where do you find that rest? You've got to keep reading to find out where the rest comes from. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
does he say anywhere in there that you will find rest from the thing that is tormenting you on this earth? Nope. You'll find rest for your souls. I have to sit there and look at Dwight, who's prayed over and over and over again for a cure to his Parkinson's, and yet holds firm over and over and over again into that trust. Like, I know that I, I, I'm battling this, and it stinks, but I can't wait till I get to heaven. There's hope in that. There's trust in a God that even though he cannot heal us, even though he cannot make us perfect, even though he cannot, he's asking us that we don't get rest for our bodies because they're not meant to last forever. However, the rest is for our souls, which is meant for eternity. He says, take my yoke upon you. If you have a team of oxen, let's say, the yoke is what is geared around the animal that then hooks to the plow or the cart, whatever you want to call it, wagon. It's what gives them the ability then to do the mission, to do the work without the pain. See, if a yoke is properly fitted to an animal, it allows them to pull with greater ease and without strain and hurt on their body. Jesus is asking us today to take on his yoke. And what is his yoke? To spread the good news. To be bearers of light in dark places. This is the yoke that he's asking us to carry. Not so that we will have answers to our problems. Not that our bank accounts will magically grow. Not that so we will find a cure for cancer. But that our ability to be calm in the midst of all of this torment and turmoil is what will carry us through to the other side. It's what allows us to take the, all this chaos and turmoil and it allows us to be a beacon of hope and light to bring heaven to earth. We just prayed that in the Lord's Prayer. It allows us to bring heaven to earth here and now. It's not something that happens later. It's something that comes now. Jesus does want to understand your burdens. And he wants to be there and help you in the middle of those burdens. But are we ready and willing to allow him and take that yoke upon us? We always want something from God. We want proof a lot of times, right? We want proof. We want a healing. We want a miracle. We want clarity. I found a good story of a, of a man who wanted clarity. His name was John Cavanaugh. John Cavanaugh, a uh, noted uh, famous ethicist, uh, really needed clarity. And so he decided that he was going to go to Calcutta and he was going to work alongside Mother Teresa to find his clarity. He got there and he sp spent days uh, working alongside uh, what they called the House of the Dying. And he met Mother Teresa and he asked him to pray for him. She says, well, what do you want me to pray for? And she, reply, or she replied, and he then uttered the request that he had carried for thousands of miles all the way to Calcutta, and he said, clarity. I, I, want, you to, I want you to pray for me to have clarity, that I'll know what I'm doing is right, and I'll know that what I'm doing is good, that, that I want answers, I want clarity. No, Mother Teresa answered. I will not do that. When he asked her why, she said, clarity is the last thing that you are clinging to and the last thing that you must let go of. And when Kavanaugh said that she always seemed to have clarity, the very kind of clarity that he was looking for, Mother Teresa laughed. And she said, I have never had clarity. I have, however, always had trust. So I will pray that you have trust in God the way I have trust in God. If we want calm or clarity in our life, it comes at the feet of trust. How can we begin to put away the worries of the world and trust God? 
It, it will be within our trust that we find God fulfilling our desires. It, it's where calm lives and resides. We cannot control the weather. However, we do find a safety in our homes. How are we knowing that that home is going to stand up under the storm? We don't, but we trust that it will. In the same way, we place our hearts and our souls under the care of God. A God who's been around since the beginning of time. A God who is aware fully of the things that are coming because he's seen the beginning from the end. A God who loves you enough to send your son, his son, into the world to die for you is the one who you can trust. I had somebody this week that kind of challenged that thought process in me. I didn't really, I didn't remember that until I was on the way over here. And I said, if my trust in God is not valuable, the only person that it's going to harm in the end would be me. If I place my trust in a God that I know and I love and I think he's good, and I'm willing to bear the yoke of Christ, and I'm willing to help people and love people and care for people, that will be a greater good than believing in nothing. Because if I believe in nothing, where is my hope? Where is my trust? If I don't believe in anything other than that you should be good, well, what's the definition of good? How on earth are we ever going to understand that there is good or can be good if we never have a marker of which to, to trust in. And one of these days, I'm going to take my last breath. We all are. And whether or not I, 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 I wake up on the shiny side of heaven or, or whether or not there's just nothing, I hope that I've lived a life that's, that's good enough and valuable enough to the people around me. I hope that they've seen something that's worthy that's worthy of the power of that testimony that came. How can our calm in the middle of our burdens lead others to see Jesus and the power of our testimony at work in the lives of others? Amen. Join me as we pray over our offering here real quick. Father in heaven, we are bringing you what we have. From the moment we take our first breath, you know that we are guaranteed to take our last one and everything in between is a gift. And so we take whatever you've gifted us with, whether we have time, energy, talents, money, gifts, whatever it is, we pour it all back to you in the hopes that you, God, will be honored, glorified, and that your light will shine in this dark world, that people will see it. We do not give as the world gives. We do not give to be seen, to be heard, to stand up, to stand out, to have a place in heaven. We can't give that much anyway. God, we give to you in response to who you are and what you've done in our life. That's our offering this morning. We pray that you would take this, you would multiply it, you would make it grow, and the world around us would see how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are able to stand and join me, we're going to close with a hymn. Uh, it is actually going to be Be Thou My Vision. If it is written as just a closer walk with thee in your bulletins, just no, we're going to change it. <laughs>
And so I had a, a couple of conversations this week. Hey, that was just a closer walk with me. <clears throat> so I had a few conversations this week, uh, a couple of folks that have been struggling uh, after surviving a car accident with little to no injuries, yet the trauma of the accident itself and what it brings. And one of the things I left them with is something that I often use um, in times of funerals, and that's John 14. See, in John 14, Jesus knows that he's going to have to leave his disciples, and so he's trying to prepare them. And so what he says to them is, do not be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. He goes on to tell them about the great place that's awaiting them. But then we get to the actual moment when it has to happen. And this is the way that it's worded in Luke 24 at 49. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. This was not a test. It was a matter of trust. Will you trust that Jesus can provide you power so that your testimony to his resurrection will be seen? Let your testimony be seen. Have a good and blessed week, everybody.